Atheist Nomads, episode 132, news for February 4, 2016. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Didn't we just do this? Yes, we did. We are restarting. (laughs) And joining us again is my lovely wife, Lauren. Hello. So for uh, those of you listening, um, we also have this on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. This is our, our second attempt with some new software, and I had to restart the computer because Lauren's camera kept freezing, and for those watching on YouTube, it may freeze periodically, and then I will be staring in the other screen, fiddling with it. And if you see me looking off to the left, that's because I'm looking at the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just jiggle if you, it. If you are actually watching on YouTube, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if I look to the right, that's at Lauren. <laughs> Or his cute puppy. Mm -hmm. (gasps) Watch us on YouTube to see the cute puppies. Hey. Okay, Rocco, you can go down. Yeah, and and doing this on YouTube will give us the opportunity to uh, reach another audience. And we have been doing YouTube with uh, just audio. And that sucks. Nobody wants that. So now you actually get to see our faces as we talk. And Wesley's headphones are over his glasses. A fucking dirty LaForge like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Seeing all sorts Gangsta. of spectrums. <laughs> Gangsta, yeah. Reading wow. rainbow all up in here. I'm the I'm uh, other vaping. the other thing that's Wesley. I have no problem with vaping. I do it while record, but I use a quiet tank when we record. I don't use my sub tank because it is a noisy motherfucker. Uh, but it tastes so good. <laughs> yes, it does, but it makes so much noise. It's like, how annoying is it when people sip from their sodas? <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in some, some relevant news, I have been on uh, other podcasts in the last few months and have fallen behind in telling you about them. Uh, right. That one in particular with that was uh, the uh, Waiting for Wrath show that was a couple months ago um got the link in the show notes now it was a lot of fun i mentioned that i had been on but i didn't actually say when it was released because i wasn't sure if they'd switch to releasing the week of recording or if they were still on the several weeks because i figured if they were still doing 18 hours of editing an episode that it'd be a couple weeks (laughs) could you read out the title of the episode for us yeah Uh, the one where we Mablau cha cha duba di pew pew. All right. right. That was episode 51. Don't miss it, people. Just just because it's fun to say. I was also on a recent Cha-cha, episode Duba of Utah Outcast that was named Utah Outcast versus the Atheist Nomads, but it was hmm. just me. So that shouldn't have been Nomads because that would require Wesley. Uh and several months ago, I interviewed with Jonathan Tendale, friend of the show and guest from a while back, and uh, he's launching a new podcast, and his first episode um, of Secular Stories is with me. So oh, yeah. check that out. Links are in the show notes for all these. Well, I was on with Carl Mamer not too long ago, so I'm still waiting to hear about that one. Oh, nice. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's also been on the show. Yes. Not too long ago. Definite friend of the show. Love him. Uh, who looks good that you guys are getting out there? Yeah. 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 Spreading the gossip. The, the love. atheist in the love. satanic word. He wanted to talk about <laughs> Satan. Oh, nice. Hey, nice. Satan. Mm. <laughs> I've been sitting in the house around with the dogs a lot. <laughs> and playing yeah. with plants. Plants don't mm. judge me. They do. They, they really do. do. I'm hoping this this <laughs> new plant will definitely judge me. It's one of those ones. If you poke it, it wilts. Well, you can <clears throat> hold the box up to the camera. Oh, oh yeah, the zombie plant. T M. No <laughs> R. 
The zombie plant touch it and the plant plays dead. Then watch it come back to life. It's actually a uh, mimosa. Crap, I can't remember what the name what the name of the plant so is. Nice. Mimosa something. I love the name though. And uh, yeah, it it's reactive. If you poke it, it wilts and then it comes back and then you can so poke it's it again. Like orange juice and champagne. Mimosas every <laughs> Sunday, people. Every Sunday. <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. Let's go ahead and jump into dusting off the degree. Ooh. Uh, with this segment, we started off with some general theological topics. Then we moved into a primer on Adventism. And for the last few, uh, we have been transitioning back to general Christian topics. Because when it comes down to it, Adventists are weird. But <laughs> theologically, they have made a concerted effort to be boring. And so, uh, let's start off with the Christian beliefs about God. For starters, Christianity is a descendant of Judaism, and as a descendant of Judaism, they believe in the same God and identify as monotheistic. One of Muhammad's alleged objections to Christianity before he founded Islam was that Christianity is polytheistic with three gods. Well, which is it? One God or three? A few Christians have easy answers for this. One of those groups historically were the Arians, and that's spelled A-R-I-A-N-S, named after their leader, uh, whose name I am blanking on. Aria. Arius. It was Arius. That's what oh, it was. I thought it would be more obvious than that. No, Arius. Uh, he was, uh, I think, Greek. And it's, this is not to be confused with the mythical race idealized by the Nazis, which is pronounced the same. And you will find similar beliefs now among Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and some Adventists and Pentecostals. And this view is that there is one eternal God, the Father, and that Jesus is the Son of God, and while divine, and while kind of God, he's a separate person. Most Arians believe that Jesus was created at the moment that God impregnated Mary, but some may believe that he emanated from God at some time earlier, such as to represent God in the fight against Satan during his rebellion in heaven. Or in the case of Mormons, uh, he was just the first spirit baby that Yahweh had. Another view is adoptionism. And with this take on it, Jesus was a mortal man born to Joseph and Mary who was later adopted by God and is now divine. The Orthodox Christian view is that there are three persons of the Godhead, but they are of one substance. So it's one God, but three persons. Those who stick to the Orthodox view will use metaphors to describe it, such as it being like water with three separate forms, you know, ice, water, and steam. However, any attempt to take the metaphor seriously or to take it to a point of actual logical consistency is a fall into some heresy, one that would have likely gotten you killed at some point in history. So where did this doctrine come from? The only biblical support for it that isn't too much of a stretch or a later addition is from Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in most churches, if you get baptized, it will be with that formula, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are non-Trinitarian churches that will use the formula from Acts where you're just baptized in the name of Jesus. And that verse doesn't say that there is one God in three persons. It just names the three, and it really is pretty weak as a basic for, basis for doctrinal formulation. The whole thing is pretty weak, in my opinion. Like, I still don't... I, you, you've explained this to me, and I still do not get it. You can't. It's to actually understand it as heresy. <laughs> it is a mystery, and Christian theologians will say it is a mystery. If you try to understand it, like I did in my systematic theology class... You will be told, you can't understand this. It is of God. It is beyond our capability of understanding it. Right. And you get an F. <laughs> I actually got an A, but... No. Yeah. Overachiever. 
Uh, the oldest attempt at Trinitarian theology was most likely from the early 2nd century Gnostic teacher Valentinus. To be fair, early church fathers were making references to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, before Valentinus described it as three subsistent entities, meaning three entities sharing one substance. And over the next 200 years, it continued to develop, and as groups sought to actually explain it in a logically consistent manner, uh, they were viewed as heretics. Uh, and this you know, included the adoptionists and Arians, like we have already talked about, and also the Sibelians, who viewed Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as effectively being semantic differences. Just language. Oh, see, I like that. That, that makes sense. It, it makes sense. Uh, adoptionism makes sense. Arianism makes sense. Trinitarianism does not. One plus one, plus one equals three, not one. <laughs> that must yeah. be some of that new math. <laughs> Now, finally, <laughs> at the Council of Nicaea in 325, the Trinitarian doctrine was hammered out and became part of the Nicene Creed. The original 325 CE Creed said basically that God is God, and Jesus is God, and there's also the Holy Spirit. And But they were very emphatic that Jesus is God. And then it closed with, and I quote, both those who say... There was a time when he was not, and he was not before he was made, and he was made out of nothing, or he is of another substance, or essence, or the Son of God is created, or changeable, or alterable. They are condemned by the Holy Catholic and Asp Apostolic Church. Those were all attempts for it to make sense. Right. Theology, when it makes sense, is heresy. Well, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to dabble in some heresy once in a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. And if uh, neither of you have anything else to add on that, it is time for a quick break and then history. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N.com forward slash atheist nomads. He is? Yep. Wesley. <laughs> throwing me off, man. Did you love that echo? <laughs> that was pretty cool, though, yeah. Echo, echo, echo. For those listening, I will be editing out the echo, no, and for those of you watching, <laughs> you won't hear it. Yeah, it's just just not there. Just mouthing. Uh, just mouthing off. Wouldn't be the first time. This day in history, February 4th, starting with... Uh, 1677, Johann Ludwig Bach is born, the uh, German violinist and composer. And no, I'm not talking about his uh, second cousin, Johann Sebastian Bach, that everybody knows. Mm. Uh, but it is interesting to note that at least one of Johann Ludwig's songs was misattributed to his more famous second cousin, uh, Johann Sebastian. Huh, nice. Yeah. And I would so, ask which song that was, but they all are basically something in G minor or something in C, <laughs> as you can't understand what song it is anyway. Yeah, it's like his 15th cantana or something, something or other. Well, that sucks. Poor, poor, poor little Ludwig. Yeah, yeah, poor little guy. Yeah, moving on along, this year is uh, coming up uh, 1913 with uh, Miss Rosa Parks. Uh, she was born. Uh, so you might have heard about uh, Rosa Louise Macaulay Parks. Uh, she actually died in uh, 2005, not too long ago. Had a hell of a good oh, stretch. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? Um, you think she's maybe one of the reasons why they have February as Black History Month? 
I would hope so. Uh, yeah, she was definitely a African American civil rights activist. Uh, the U.S. Congress at some point actually called her the first lady of civil rights and the mother of freedom movement. Freedom. Uh, freedom. Her birthday, uh, February 4th, and the day that she was arrested, December 1st, have uh, both become Rosa Parks days in different states. So, like uh, California, Missouri, Ohio, and Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. um, Though she definitely wasn't the first. um, She got arrested on December 1st, 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, when she refused to obey bus driver James F. Blake, douchebag, Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, to give up her seat in the, uh, and go move to the colored section uh, when a white passenger uh, wanted her seat, really. So, yeah, uh, people like uh, Bayard Rustin, Irene Morgan, Sarah Louise Keys, uh, you know, they, they, all, they all did this before her, but uh, yeah, fucking A, she's the one that got heard from the most. And, man, Oh, fucking hey. Um yeah, this this lady just wanted to fucking sit down and god damn it, anybody should be able to sit down where the fuck they want to. Agreed. Agreed. Let your tired tired old ass just sit wherever you want, really. God damn. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on on along to uh the year nineteen forty. The day that the great George A. Romero, American director and producer, was born. Woohoo! One of the, totally one of the greats. Uh, I mean, have you heard of Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Land of the Dead? Basically zombies. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, seriously, this this guy is truly a a badass, though. Uh, So, you know, if, if you like those kind of movies, if you haven't seen them, you gotta. So get out there and see some badass old school movies. Yeah, I mean, there's festivals all over the country. Um, there's all sorts of uh, new ways of celebrating Night of the Living Dead by uh-huh. having artists like uh, redo scenes. So you have a whole bunch of, you have like 50 different artists. Each one gets to do a scene in their own style. You get to watch <laughs> the whole movie that way. That's really fun. I'm yeah, going to say it's... that he 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 uh, directed a movie called Creep Show, which is just a bunch of little short stories that Stephen King wrote. And this movie scared the fuck out of me when I was like five, six years old. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I had nightmares for years. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you laugh, but that shit's true. Man, this, this guy put the fear into me. All right. So moving on along. Uh the year is 1947 and 1948. I just find this really kind of weird. Dan Quayle and Alice Cooper, born on the same day. So, yeah, one uh, American sergeant, lawyer, politician, and the 44th vice president of the United States, Dan Quayle. And uh, Alice Cooper, American singer, songwriter, and actor. Was <laughs> Dan Quayle an actor, too? Or am I thinking of somebody else? You're thinking of... Uh, Reagan. No, I'm not thinking of Reagan. Yeah. I was definitely thinking of not Reagan. But well, I'm th- I'm thinking about Alice Cooper in uh, Wayne's World for one. But oh well, Alice Cooper he does cameos ev- for all over the place. But Dan Quayle, I thought for some reason. Well, he was really famous for saying "potato" wrong. Yeah, yeah, there is the potato. He got a lot of he got a lot of screen time for that. That's true. <laughs> Maybe it was just people couldn't believe that such an idiot could be vice president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> I think Animaniacs Ronald. made fun of him. Who's the president? Ronald Reagan. The actor? Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's my uh, uh, that's that's my movie quote for the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, somebody tell me what movie that's from, okay? I dare you. It's really easy. Uh, this day in history, 1967, the Lunar Orbiter Program... Lunar Orbiter 3 lifts off from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 13 on its mission to identify possible landing sites for the Surveyor and Apollo spacecraft. <gasps> okay. So, yeah, they launched a little camera at uh, NASA, that is, 
uh, to basically go around the moon and take pictures. Uh, yeah, to find safe landing spots. So it was uh, equipped to collect a uh, selenodontic uh, radio. Uh, it was one more time, please. Uh, it was equipped to uh, collect a variety of different things like uh, um, radiation intensity and micromedia, micromedioid uh, impact data. Uh, so it took tons of pictures also, and uh, most of the pictures were read out successfully into like a small motor burned out in the orbiter, leaving about 25% of the frames in the reel unable to be read. But uh, yeah, it was very successful and um, they actually crashed it into the moon a couple of years later uh, hmm. right on schedule and yeah Poor yeah that's thing when things go talk. go right when they plan to crash things into the moon that's that's good yeah 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy moving up oh I, I don't even know if this is a good thing or a bad thing here. <laughs> the year is 2004, and Facebook uh, is, well, founded. Yeah. Where were you when Facebook started? I could give a <laughs> fuck, really. I was, yep, senior in high school. Yeah. And we were going to college, and you had to have a college account to join. That was back when it was uni- university and college only. Oh, and yeah. I was going to college, but it was... They didn't want your kind. My college was just starting to get into into MySpace at that point. <laughs> Woo, hardcore! I'm going to share my favorite band. So yeah, it was. <laughs> I didn't even up. hear about Facebook until 2008, I think. We, Facebook. That's when it went. Po- you know, went went to the populace. That's when yeah. it truly died. Well, well actually, actually, a way sooner than that. Uh, so yeah, it was launched February four. Uh, by Mark Zuckerberg uh, with his college, Har- his Harvard college roommates and a few other students. Um, founders had initially limited the website's membership to Harvard students, but uh, later expanded to colleges in the Boston area, the Ivy League, and Stanford because, well, why not, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gradually added support for students at various other universities and later to high school students. Since 2006, anyone who is at least 13 years old uh, has been allowed to become a registered user. So, yeah, 2006 is when you could, anybody could get in. Nice. That's when it went to pot. <laughs> no, uh, that was more... <laughs> 20... That was more 2004. That was more 2004. <laughs> I would say, you know, when I switched over, uh, it was better than, than MySpace because MySpace was getting taken over by kids and getting too goofy. And, like, all kinds of weird apps and games and crap like that. And then that came to Facebook, like, a year after I joined. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you brought them. All right. Apparently. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Obama. Thanks, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the year 2006, a stampede occurs in the Phil Sports Arena near Manila, killing 71 people. Damn. This, yeah, this one's just weird. Um, so yeah, uh, here's the thing. February 4th, about 30,000 people gathered outside the Phil Sports Stadium. I'm probably saying that totally right. I'm sure. Uh, (laughs) to participate in the first anniversary episode of the popular and now defunct ABS CBN, uh, early afternoon television game show. Wow. Wow. We, uh, yeah, the show, the name of the show really is wow. Wow. We. So, uh, many thousands of people were waiting to get tickets into the show. Some had camped there for days just at a chance to win the prizes that were being given on that show, uh, including jeepneys, which is like a sort of some type of Filipino bus, uh, taxis, because that's the prize, and mm-hmm. a top prize of 1 million pesos. Wow. Uh, so, at least like 10, 12 bucks. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so around 6 a.m., the stampede started when organizers of the show began handing out tickets to the people in the front of the crowd. Of course, you know, people being people surged forward, which prompted the security guards to close the entrance gates. And that just really fucking made it worse. And 
due to the crowd's impatience, of course, and the gates just eventually gave way. Uh, people in the front of the crowd stumbled, re uh, resulting in that stampede. So 73 people again. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, 71 people were killed, and let's see, it was about 392 people were injured. The majority of the victims were young and middle-aged women. Uh, and most of the people that were there, though, were also, like, extremely poor uh, and just hoping for the, the chance of essentially getting fucking rich from, from the show. Hmm. So, extreme poverty... And game shows just maybe don't mix. Maybe just, you know, give these people some money to, you know, start a start a business, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Microloans, go get go to Kiva dot org. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's what I got. All right. We're gonna take another uh break and then we will be back with science. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. And we have... Science. Science! You have to say it right. Science! Science! Yes, that's much better. <laughs> Speaking of science, Dustin and I totally won a science-related trivia quiz last night. Nice. It's awesome. I highly suggest people go out and arrange such things for fun, because Geeks Who Drink just doesn't cut it. <laughs> anyway, so first and foremost, uh, the one of the articles I chose, The Fungus Among Us, not anymore, anyway. Um, <laughs> NASA sent up a uh, fungus found in Antarctica um, to see if it could survive Martian conditions. So, ah, cool. So they sent it up to the International Space Station, where it went out to their Expose platform. The Expose platform is this experimental design by the European Space Agency. So I guess it may not have been NASA. It could have been those guys. Um, it simulates the Martian uh, conditions, 95% carbon atmosphere with a, le a mere 3% nitrogen and a whole 0.15% oxygen. Very low pressure to see if this fungus would survive. It's all part of a program called LIFE, Lichens and Fungi Experiment. They didn't really try on that one. I guess the yeah. I guess yeah. it lent itself to an to a good enough name, so they went with that. Um, the fungus is called a Cryomyces antarcticus, and the Cryomyces mentari, and apparently they did survive. So it'll be interesting to see what else they send up. Probably more lichens or mm. fungi. You liking the fungi? Uh, Oh, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Next, something for um, all of you in the Midwestern area. St. Paul has a amorphalus, amorphophallus titanum ready to bloom. Hmm. That is so much fun to say. Amorphalus, am, sorry, amorphophallus titanum, or the titan arum, so-called by Sir David Attenborough, because he thought amorphophallus was inappropriate for TV. <laughs> um, this is the corpse flower, the corpse plant. It is huge. It can get up to six feet tall, and it looks like this uh, big, dark red, you know, just a single dark red petal surrounding what looks like a very large phallus. Right. Amorphophallus actually means misshapen phallus, hmm. yeah, for those yeah. of you who aren't brushed up on your Latin. Damn it. Rocco's making cute noises. <laughs> it's really cute. He's snoring in my lap. <laughs> anyway, this this plant only blooms about every five to seven, uh, five to ten years, so it's it's f fairly irregular and kind of hard to capture. But um, if it's blooming in your town or nearby, I'd highly suggest going to check it out. The carrion-like sweet musky smell that he emits, uh, of course, is an attractant for his primary pollinator, the flesh fly and the carrion beetle. Hmm. Um, 
makes sense. If you smell like rotten meat, you'll bring bugs that eat rotten meat, and then they'll go to other things that smell like rotten meat. Um, but it doesn't eat the bugs. It does not eat the bugs. It itself okay. is still just a passive flower. It only uses them to facilitate reproduction. Yes. Like most plants. Yeah. I've been harping a lot on the carnivorous plants, so it's always up to up to question whether or not mm-hmm. but I'm talking about something that's carnivorous or not. Especially if it's, true. you know, foul smelling. F- foul smelling and phallic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You sound like uh, anybody we know. I don't know. <laughs> you say it first. <laughs> um, the next article that I found was really interesting. Now, this one showed up as a headline and then disappeared very quickly, which surprised me. Um, I guess there's, I mean, there is a lot of news going on, but I thought this was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. There is um, a lot of pressure on a pregnant woman to do things yeah. ex- in a very natural way. Um, so you have to deliver vaginally. You need to breastfeed. Uh, do all this stuff that makes you the perfect mother. But as we all know, that is not necessarily the case all the time. And thus, we have things like C-sections and formula. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But by going these routes, the babies do tend to lose out on beneficial exposure. So what I'm talking about is vaginal fluid that is laden with good, happy bacteria that helps children develop better immune systems in their first six months of life. Uh, So the ICANN School of Medicine, which is the cruelest name. For any kind of school. The ICANN School. The ICANN School of Medicine in New York um, found a way of uh, getting these bacteria to newborns in a way that's safe and and has been proven to help the babies in the long term. What they do is that they put a uh, mesh sponge in, in the woman, in the, in the vagina, while, like, about an hour before labor. Um, at that point, they usually do the C-section. Baby comes out, gets rinsed off or whatever they do. I don't know. I've never actually had a baby. But then they take that sponge and they wipe the baby down. Mouth, eyes, hands, all over with this, this fluid that gathered up in the vaginal tract of the mother. This has been shown to um, help the baby gain important lactobacillus and bacteroids. Uh, those are both both known to boost immunity in children. Now, lactobacillus is kind of, it's just the happy bacteria that ends up in the gut of the baby. So that's how you get babies with happy bi- microbiomes. Mm-hmm. Bacteroids are kind of like, well, I don't know really how to describe them, but they're really good for you. They develop uh, after after birth a little bit into past newborn phase, but they, they also help boost immunity and help uh, what they're hoping is this will lower the amount of chronic illnesses seen in children nowadays, illnesses such as asthma and allergies. Um, I was born vaginally, still suffer from asthma and allergies, so yeah, obviously <laughs> it's not 100%, but it will help a lot of C-section babies gain a boost in their immunity that they didn't have before. Um, it is still theoretical and is not 100% preventative of any diseases, but hopefully a little bit more studies will go into this and we'll make a more bacteria-friendly environment for we baby Seamus. So, Dustin, nice. am I the only one that thought uh, <clears throat> when you heard ICANN, did you think Internet Cor- Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers? <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. Oh. I thought of the little the little train. It's a train, right? The I can. I think I can. I think I can. No, that's Thomas the train. Yeah. No, Thomas that's the little engine that could. The little, aha, there. Yeah, but I thought that was still Thomas the the engine. Mm-mm. No. Oh, okay. The little engine uh, that could. It was a train. Yeah. So I'm thinking I C A N N dot org. Lull. That's L O L for those of you who mm-hmm. don't know. When I say lull, lull, I was that kid growing up. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it for science this week. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I had to restart the program again because the cameras kept freezing and dying. So we'll see if it works in the next segment. All right. Wait, so does that mean it lost a whole bunch of stuff? Just video. Oh, okay. Sorry, YouTube. I'll, I'll patch that We'll figure in. it out. Yep. 
So we have video again. <laughs> hey, if you guys out there in YouTube land know how to help Dustin figure this out, that'd be great. I'm using OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting System or Software. Anyway, we're going to take another quick break and we'll be back with politics and religion. So we have video again. <laughs> hey, if you guys out there in YouTube land know how to help Dustin figure this out, that'd be great. I'm using OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting System or Software. Anyway, we're going to take another quick break, and we'll be back with politics and religion. As a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice, consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine and Red Bull. We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com use the links on the right side of the page a dollar an episode is all we ask all right as we all know state governments tend to be the cradle of of governmental experimentation and batshit insanity oh that too and it is the new year which means new legislative sessions for the various states and We're going to possibly make this a recurring segment for the next few months as we go through. Because it's ridiculous up in here. Yeah, state legislatures (laughs) behaving badly. Our own included. Yeah, so first off, we have Florida House Bill 865. Ah, Excuse me. And it passed the criminal justice panel by a vote of 8 to 3. And this would make the performance of elective abortions or running a clinic that would perform elective abortions, a felony. Punishable by 30 years in prison. Per the bill, the legislature finds that all human life comes from the creator, has an inherent value that cannot be quantified by man, and begins at the earliest biological development of a fertilized human egg. Abortions would be allowed only if it's necessary to protect the mother's life and two doctors sign off on that necessity. Okay, so essentially Planned Parenthood, gone. Yep. Because even with all the stuff, I mean, like abortions are like just a little teeny, tiny little bit of what they do, but Planned Parenthood would definitely be gone. You know, normally I don't like to cover mm. stories quite like this one because it is... It's passed a committee. It hasn't gone to the full legislature. And even if it passes, it would die in court. Oh, sure. <laughs> Pretty fast. It, Pretty it quickly. Still, it still pisses me off to see that them talking about, you know, their creator. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So what the fuck does that have to do with anything that a state law state has to do? That it, shouldn't be in there at all. Should not, no. Uh, Oklahoma has several anti-gay bills that are all absolutely terrible. (laughs) You should feel bad, Oklahoma. Yes. uh, HB 1598 was passed out of committee last year, but never got a floor vote. And it's back again. It protects gay conversion therapy for minors something that is currently allowed, and while not explicitly protecting aversion therapy, it does describe it in horrible detail. And I quote, aversion, aversion therapy means any counseling by a mental health provider that exposes or asks a client or patient to undergo physical pain, such as electroshock or electroconvulsive therapy, touch therapy, pornography exposure, or vomit induction therapy, in order to change sexual behavior or gender identity expressions and or to eliminate or reduce sexual or romantic attractions or feelings towards individuals of the same sex. We're talking about some of the worst fucking things ever. I mean, We're talking like, remember how you kind of felt bad for the guy at the end of Clockwork Orange? Yeah. 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 That's I'm, because what they did in that movie was evil. Feeding people chemicals to make them throw up. Try and fucking have associations with vomiting. Uh, With with loving a person. Touch therapy is 
one of the more concerning because that sounds a whole lot like rape. Well, touch well, therapy is when touch? another a gay. Uh, well, touch therapy is like when a closeted uh, a gay individual that's afraid of coming out is touching other gay people and telling them that that's bad. Because <laughs> there ain't no straight guy gonna be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Everything about this is just terrible. Uh, uh, hopefully, this bill dies quickly. Uh, uh, fucking uh, electroshock therapy. I mean, no. I mean, that should only happen in the bedroom if you if you're consenting. And an adult. Yeah. Right. These. This is for minors. This is for kids. Yeah. No. Some of whom are proclaiming themselves to be gay or or bi as young as 12, 13. Yeah. I thought it, it even worse with the, well, are, are we going to move on to the next one? Also? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, yeah. So with that in mind, House Bill 3044 would prohibit school counselors and other staff members from providing information about LGBT groups or referrals to gay affirming therapists if the referral quote pertains to human sexuality this is in light of the fact that lgbt teens are at high risk of depression and suicide especially if they have homophobic parents and school counselors and referrals from those counselors is critical for them getting help of course the bill does make the referral okay as long as the parents are notified at least 24 hours in advance the same homophobic parents who would have them go through electro shop molestation, porn exposure, vomit inducing. Yeah, basically everything therapy. we just fucking talked about. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Assholes. Well, I guess they just consider the suicide is just getting rid of the unwanted. Yeah. Or something. Something like that. It's pretty sick. Pretty sad that. Of course, it's not much better here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to Idaho. Uh, Senate Bill Seven Thirty Three would prohibit anyone found to have communicable or infectious diseases from getting a marriage license. That's I harsh, considering that one. everybody has HPV. Yeah, yeah. This uh, obviously would be targeted at HIV and gay men who are still one of the highest risk groups for HIV. I want this one to pass. I, really <laughs> I want do. this to go to court. No, I want this to pass. And then like everybody that has HPV, everybody that has the fucking herp, you know, they're <laughs> yeah. Every single Senator and legislator out there, all, all of their, all of their teen daughters that, you know, you know, have the clap, yeah, uh -huh. whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is going to be hilarious. It, yeah. Hilarity will ensue with this. I want to see all those Christ, good Christian people getting told they can't get married. <laughs> good Christian straight people. Of course, if this bill passes, it will go to court. Hilarious. And it will die. It is in, in violation. Just the fact that it would target HIV but it's in violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Oh, they didn't think about that one, did they? Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Utah. Now, if you're noticing a trend, we're starting on the far east coast, and you skipped we Washington, though. Are yeah, because Washington's fucking cool. Oh, um, we'll, we'll get back to Washington at the end so that we. Uh, oh yeah. Finish Sorry, on Washington the west coast. Washington has one douchebag. Yeah. So uh, the Utah uh, Senate Concurrent Resolution 8 would declare pornography a public health crisis. And I'm going to read a few oh, hilarious... This is, this is good. A few? <laughs> you got to read the whole thing. I'm, I'm reading lines eight, uh, 40 to 59. Yes. It is way too long. Uh for the, the full text to, to read on here. That's okay. This is the best part. Oh, yeah. I, I selected that intentionally. Whereas, because pornography treats women as objects and commodities for the viewer's use, it teaches girls they are to be used and teaches boys to be users. 
Whereas pornography normalizes violence and abuse of women and children. Whereas pornography treats women and children as objects and often depicts rape and abuse as if they are harmless. Whereas pornography equates violence towards women and children with sex and pain with pleasure, which increases the demand for sex trafficking, prostitution, child sexual abuse, images, and child pornography. Whereas potential detrimental effects on pornography's users can impact brain development and functioning, contribute to emotional and medical illnesses, shape deviant sexual arousal, and lead to difficulties in forming and maintaining intimate relationships, such as, as well as problematic or harmful sexual behaviors and addiction. Quite the run-on. Whereas, recent research indicates that pornography is potentially biologically addictive, which means the user requires more no- novelty, often in the forms of more shocking material in order to be satisfied. Whereas this biological addiction leads to increasing themes of risky sexual behaviors, extreme degradation, violence in child sexual abuse images, and child pornography. Whereas pornography use is linked to lessening desire in young men to marry, dissatisfaction in marriage, and infidelity. So we could probably go through line by line and tear this apart. (laughs) Um, but for Utah, yeah. who is the ca- country's largest purveyor of pornographic arts. Um, <laughs> and the kinkiest porn. And the kinkiest porn. They're obviously thinking that this is the end of the world. Yeah. And nobody's ever going to marry anybody or have stable relationships if they can just go home and whack off in front of a c- computer. Yeah. You know, a yeah. couple of things that I, I do want to, to point out from it. Uh, it. It says that porn treats women as objects and commodities and teaches boys to be users. Uh, most of the porn I watch, at least, the men are props. Is it the porn I gave you? I don't watch that much. Not really my thing. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, the men are... They're basically sex toys for the women. That is true. And I would say that's most porn is like that. Unless it's, you know, man on man. Then. Unless it's Utah, where apparently they get into the kinky shit. <laughs> now, kinky porn. It just, that's fun to say. Kinky porn. It, it shows BDSM scenes. Yes, there are, there is some that just depict rape. But saying that that leads to children? Bullshit. Right. That is a completely different category. You mean child porn? Yeah. The BDSM can sometimes lead to children if... Well, okay, the the porn doesn't. <laughs> porn does not lead to having Just children saying. or harming children. Ah. And... Sorry, hon, you're named Bear because we conceived you at the Bear and Vixen <laughs> Club downtown. <laughs> and so much of this is is claiming facts. Well, the that recent are research not. indicates that pornography is potentially biologically addictive. So right here we have research that indicates that pornography might be addictive. So and it's, still nothing. It's one study that as far as I know has not been reproduced yet. And it doesn't really count as research, at least not to be basing legislation on. And the claim that it lessens desire in young men to marry. Yeah, it might make it so they don't feel like they have to get married at 20. <laughs> at 17. And did this, this fa- satisfaction in marriage and infidelity? Oh, hell no. Access to porn <laughs> and masturbation? Increases satisfaction in marriage and decreases any perceived need for infidelity. Now, there are some cases out there where pornography, either with the, with the, the, on the male side or the female side, does lead to problems in, in a marriage or in a relationship. But those can oftentimes be solved through counseling or, or commu- better communication um, well, and it, certainly doesn't mean that the marriage or relationship is automatically over and when it leads to problems it's because one partner is getting neglected or is batshit insane 
Hey, that was judgmental. If someone is freaked out about a spouse watching porn, that is insane. Well, they're in Utah, and pro- yeah. apparently they've gotten in the habit of writing uh, bills. <laughs> yeah. uh, now moving from the Utah Senate to the Utah House, they have a bill that is titled the Parentage Amendments, and this would make it explicit that as the bill's author, Craig Powell, says that between an opposite-sex couple and a same-sex couple, all other things being equal, the judge would grant preference to rewarding custody to a heterosexual couple. And this applies to fostering and adoption. Now, I can't think... I I don't think there would ever be a case that you can have an opposite-sex couple and a same-sex couple and all things being equal, all other things being equal. That's just... That can't happen. (laughs) <laughs> so they wrote a bill that includes language that is impossible to even happen because there's no such thing as all things, all other things being equal. That's like segregation is, is, uh, is equality. It's, it doesn't work that you're, way. You're Somebody never going is to have always going to have the any, upper hand. Any two couples will never be equal. Yeah. So that's going to get thrown out just from the language. But still, it's ridiculous that this stuff even, that that's even an issue. Because it is damn hard to adopt. It shouldn't be, but it is. It's expensive, it's difficult, it takes years, and they should not be putting in roadblocks in any way, shape, or form that gets these kids out of the foster system and into a home. Mm -hmm. Angry personal rant over. All right, Idaho has... uh... Idaho! A, a wonderful bill from State Representative Ron Nate, a Republican from Rexburg and professor at Brigham Young University, Idaho, BYU, Idaho. Those are Mormons, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you, <coughs> possibly the most Mormon city in the country. It is the most Mormon city in the country. And yeah, Mormon school. Uh, he has proposed an amendment to the state constitution to remove some of the very firm church state separation that the state officially enjoys thanks to early Idahoans being afraid of Mormons taking over. (laughs) And it would explicitly allow state funds to go to religious schools, notably tax uh, payer funded scholarships that could be used at BYU, Idaho. So Mm. the, if in case anybody doesn't know the LDS church is huge and it is incredibly (laughs) rich it has so much money, it's not even funny. So the fact that they're not willing to pony up a few couple thousand dollars for these, for the school, you know, that's one issue. But for that school then to turn around and ask the government of the state it's in for more money is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of great. It's kind of like s- the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> now, I haven't seen any articles on this, so I don't have a link for it, but I have been getting emails about it. Uh, the Idaho... Um, state legislature is also looking at changing the state science standards that were adopted by the education department last year um, to explicitly state that they need to teach the controversy about the origin of life, the origin of humans, the age of the earth, the age of the universe, climate change, causes of climate change it basically tears yeah. the entire science standards everything tears it apart and um it's one of idaho's only saving graces is the fact that they have these science standards in place uh, because even with these science standards in place the teachers still teach bs um i know from personal experience in seventh grade 15 years ago When somebody told me that he was only teaching us evolution because he had to. And a teacher that I had two years ago at CWI who was teaching me all sorts of teaching in in biology 101 that there was all sorts of other explanations for things. Uh. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, making our way all the way from the East Coast to the West, we now have... 
uh, a Washington State Senate committee that has passed a bill four to three to rescind a Washington Human Rights Commission rule that allows transgender people to use the bathroom and locker room that matches their gender identity when in public buildings. So I actually, I've been quiet because I've been editing the notes for the last couple of minutes. Um, I had to <laughs> I add in a couple of things. So I, I first want to say this is all started because of uh, representative Republican representative Graham Hunt, um, who is fairly local to me and a very close personal friend of uh, Joe Kennedy, the lovely football coach that we talked about incessantly a few months back. Um, but even better, uh, this douchebag, Graham Hunt, just quit because, well, um, he's been lying about the medals that he got oh. recently, uh, back in the in the in his glory days. Nice. And oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he just quit that like two hours ago. It just came out in the uh, Seattle Times. So, so he quit his job in the military or he quit as state representative? He is no longer state rep- representative Graham Hunt. Wow. Here, here. Yeah. Um, it kind of sucks because he is being pushed out for the wrong reason. <laughs> I Uh-oh. mean, yeah, he, nobody he's being pushed can, out for, he's for a being good pushed reason. Out. It, it, but, it's, it's another good reason. Yeah. Okay. It's, that's a better way of putting it. And anybody knows if somebody puts on a military uniform who isn't exactly, you know, what they rep- are representing, they, it's like being, I don't know, like a child rapist in a prison. People will go after you. <laughs> well, when you campaign on medals that you have won, you better have won those medals. Otherwise, oh, yeah. you're lying. He bought the Purple Heart off of eBay for $20. <laughs> now, of course, in Idaho, we have the state education superintendent who lied about her PhD that she didn't have. Yeah. And she still got elected. Wow. Oh, and then she also um, copy and pasted stuff from her uh, run, uh, the person running against her's website. Mm-hmm. So the state education person was, yeah. Yeah. Bad. Anyway, yeah. Um, so anyways. The transgender sh- bathroom bill has been an interesting one because we've seen it across the country. And we've seen the backlash it gets across the country. When you have a guy, let's see, how how they, when you show a bunch of girls doing their makeup in a men's bathroom, sure. it doesn't look right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, if you have or a dude with big muscles and a beard in a women's restroom, in a woman's bathroom, wearing a you know, that's not fair to the person who's trans, you know, who's transgender in the, especially if they're in the middle of trans what's that called transitioning Transitioning. it's really awkward already for them to be out in public to make a bill that criminalizes what they do is just when all they need to criminalize is who they are yeah criminalizes who they are and they just need to pee (laughs) and just let them go and the bill is all over concerns that it'll be an opportunity for people to assault people well you know who assaults sexually assaults people it's cisgender straight men yeah Yeah. usually in the bathrooms (laughs) and saying that transgender people can use the restroom that matches their identity that's not going to stop straight men from going into the bathroom they don't belong in to hurt someone and having that rule in place isn't going to encourage straight men to go into the wrong bathroom to hurt someone. I still wanted to know, want to know who's going to be the head pecker checker. Right. <laughs> Putting that out there. Yeah. I think Graham Hunt should be it. He's uh, so concerned about genitals. He should be the one checking them all. Making sure everything's all, all, all the ducks are in a row. Or at least the two eggs and a twig, yeah. Oh, poor little berries. twig. All yeah. right, we have spent enough time on uh, state legislatures, and we have more news. Okay. And I have to go let the dog out. Okay. Uh, Ooh, while, we were, we were re- <laughs> while we were recording the last episode, uh, news was starting to break of the arrest of several members of the Bundy militant occupation. <laughs> This was a joint FBI Oregon State Police operation. 
while two vehicles were headed to a public meeting in John Day. Both of the Bundy brothers and three others have been arrested and charged with felonies. Ryan Bundy was injured, and Robert Finnicum, i.e. Tartman, mm-hmm. was killed after the second vehicle sped away from the stop, plowed into a snowbank when they approached a roadblock, and Finnicum was caught on video from an FBI helicopter appearing to be reaching for a gun. Twice. And I have heard... I watched the video. I've heard reports from a credible source he was taken out by a sniper. I'm fine with that. Yep. A sniper would have a better look at what's going on than anybody there watching through a scope from a hill. And a sniper's job is to make sure everybody else stays safe. He had a martyr's complex. He wanted to die. He Mm -hmm. said he didn't want to live in a fucking box. He got what he wanted. Yep. Uh, The next day, most of the women and children left. Well, most of the women, all of the children left. And then authorities finally set up roadblocks and shut off power. Eight people left after that, three of whom were arrested. The rest, the remaining five were released. And now there are only four remaining, three of whom are free to go. They won't leave because one has a warrant for his arrest. And they won't leave unless all four are free to go home. Oh, I, I, I believe and, it. I believe it's like uh, two guys and then a married couple. Yes. And they, they don't want to leave until everybody, yes. everybody gets uh, pardoned. Not just the four that are there now. Well, they would, they might be demanding that everybody be released. If they were all told they could go home, they'd go home. Yeah, but no. The the at least one of them has charges waiting for him. I'm guessing for destruction of property, since they did have a live streaming video with heavy equipment operating, actively destroying federal property. And uh, they have also shut off their cell phones. Yeah, the way I understand it, all they can still get incoming calls, but uh, all outgoing calls go straight to the FBI. But. <laughs> Uh, their outgoing calls are completely blocked so they can't call out incoming calls some of them are going to the FBI is what I heard I, I was swap that that their outgoing calls go to the FBI I saw that why would their incoming calls go most of the incoming calls are being rerouted to the FBI it's common during any kind of a police operation to right. reroute so, the affected calls to the police right those be the outgoing calls incoming to they've just blocked off communication for them okay <laughs> let's keep going yeah <laughs> uh or does this say here? oh i did get an interview in with the um let's see there's four of them there now right so yeah. two yeah. of them uh, two guys a, and a married couple. And the married couple feel like they're trapped there now because there's a warrant out for the husband's arrest and the wife won't leave. We already talked about that. Oh, right, right. But um, yes, I know I was out letting the dogs out. Uh, Who? But Let the dogs out? specifically that they have to stay and defend themselves now. Mm-hmm. And you're like, defend yourselves? <laughs> All you got to do is put your fucking gun down and walk out. Yeah, no, I guess I guess that's not a choice now. Now they've got now they got to just kill everyone. I don't know what they're thinking. Defend themselves. Yeah, I because thought that word they can defend themselves from fucking snipers and like fucking shit flying. Yeah, there's like fucking airplanes and tanks. And Wife needs to go home. Guy needs to go to jail. Let's just. Mm-hmm. No, they all need to go to jail. Fuck it. Well, all of them do. Well, yeah, she should. She's technically she hasn't partaken in any of the actual offensive acts <laughs> don't care so i think they were actually going to let her go if she decided to go but she's sticking with her husband so if it was me everyone now she's well now it's now she is now she's a uh what do you call that when you uh company An accessory a, a accessory yeah. to a crime okay I, I just looked up the uh article that talks about the phones they have blocked their ability to send calls 
Three of them are unable to receive calls. One is still able to, at least as of January 31st, was still able to receive calls. I bet you it's the woman. And I saw in a different article that some of the calls with people trying to call them was going to the FBI instead. It could be they were just totally screwing up and rerouting things. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, this next story is uh, courtesy of uh, Jason Ford. <laughs> A study presented at the American Physical Society meeting in Dallas looked at nine countries that record religious affiliations in their censuses. Going back as much as 100 years and using a mathematical model developed to access, or assess the decline of lesser spoken languages found that religion is headed towards extinction in the country studied. The countries were Australia, Austria, Canada, the Czech Republic, Finland, Ireland, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Switzerland. They only looked at those countries because they're the ones that actually ask about religion in their censuses. Censuses, censuses. <laughs> See, and then the part of me is like, well, what about the, the languages? That's what I want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> that was a different study a decade ago. Ah. Oh. Uh, 2003, the BBC article does have a link to more about that. I'm just, I'm cultural anthropologist by heart. So it was like, oh no, distinction, extinction of, of languages. But, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Religion is dying. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah. Travis McGee, no love for you. Ha 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 I'm just going to let that hang there. Travis. <laughs> And now that sanctions against Iran have been lifted, the Iranian president has been touring Europe. One meeting was supposed to be over lunch with the French president. The lunch was canceled after they failed to reach an agreement about one item that the French wanted on the table, wine. Iran refused to go to a meeting with wine, and France refused to have lunch without it. I love it. It is so cartoony. And perfect representation of both countries. Italy went ahead and took wine off the menu. Uh, they also, I uh, think they were, they also covered their statues in an art museum. They, they covered the statues that had just the exposed genitalia. Sure, sure. However, any graven images is bad in Islam. So they should have covered all statues and all paintings of people if they're really trying to be culturally sensitive. You know what? Do the French even have actual drinking water, or does does all potable <laughs> they do water? Now. Just, they do They do now. All, I think all potable water goes directly to the production of, of grapes. It should. It should. Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't think they actually have running water. So yeah. I mean, like, but come on, seriously, fuck it. I mean, why can't another person drink wine if they want to? Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean, are you so tempted? Are you so afraid? What, okay, it's not your, like the French your, president was going to be forcing them to drink. Right. Peer it pressure, a, peer pressure, drink menu this. Option. Ah. What's funny is I googled France running water, and all you get is pictures of magnificent white horses running through beaches. <laughs> and, and it's like, wow, I don't even care what I was looking at now. It's like, this is, look at those glorious horses running, running through the surf. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, water supply and sanitation in France is universal and of good quality. You need the good quality water for good quality wine. <laughs> and yeah, you go to France, you expect there to be wine. I would be upset if I had lunch and wine and lunch and wine. You lunch were, in France and You are not a conservative. Wine. Muslim who happens to be the head of a country who feels like his tastes should be bowed down to. The head of a country who is trying to enter the world stage and doesn't want to behave like he a mature country. If he wants to be country. an a-hole, then he's going to be branded an a-hole. That's just going to be the... You know, my parents who listen to the podcast, uh, they don't Sorry. drink. Who are super awesome and sweet and I love you guys. Yeah, they don't drink for religious reasons. 
That's fine. They aren't offended when other people do. Wait, can other people drink in front of your parents? Yes. <gasps> in their home. <laughs> oh my goodness. They, they are I, wonderful hosts cool. and hostesses. Yeah. yeah. You know what? If somebody comes to my house, I'm, I, I might drink. But if, some, there, if I go to their house and they say no drinking, I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. no there drinking. is one exception to the rule, I think. And this has been, this is actual, like something I ran into was I lived with somebody who was in AA. And when he requested that I not have any alcohol in the house, I, I, I was fine with that. Because he had mm -hmm. an actual like medical issue with not being able to not drink tons of anything. Yeah. In that case, I think, you know, unless I, the Iranian president is secretly a part of Alcoholics Anonymous, I, <laughs> you know, I, this is just, this was, uh, it was just a bully trying to get his way. Yeah. And speaking of bullies, the Reverend James, there's semen in my coffee, Manning. Yes. And the <sighs> Atla Worldwide Church is in a lot of trouble. Oh, the church's building, per a court order, is to be sold at auction to fa or for failure to pay their bills. According to Manning, and I quote, I assure you, it's about a water, and a, a water bill and a tax that can't be levied against this church. The sale of the building will go towards paying more than a million dollars in unpaid bills, including $194 in water bills. Additionally, Reverend Manning has more than $355,000 in tax liens against him personally. This is somebody who does not understand how taxes and bills work. Apparently, in his reading of the Bible, he got so hung up on the anti-gay parts that he missed the give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Taxation, man. It keeps the keeps the roads clean and the water flowing. And bills are, you know, rules that allow churches to not be taxed Bullshit. don't mean they can't, they don't, they're exempt from paying bills. If you use water, you have to pay for the water you use. That is a commodity. <laughs> ah, God damn. I highly doubt they're doing $200,000 worth of, of baptisms. You know, if you're going to use water, you got to pay for the water. Mm -hmm. That's toilets flushing and probably mostly toilets flushing. Probably. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and move. Nobody's going to touch that shit in the church. Nobody's going <laughs> to. Okay, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and move on to feedback. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. no, oh, not yet. Yeah. Uh, well, I just wanted to read this other headline. Seaman Latte Pastor says fags will own his church when men can carry babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is in part because oh, a group can we please get a transgender person pregnant and just say, all right. A, there is a no, group. No, no, no. Aziz Ansari just did a comic routine from a couple of years ago that has totally nothing to do with, with this directly, but uh, basically this, uh, this, this couple meet through these extreme circumstances of, you know, they, uh, they both met at a, uh, at a, at a store one day, uh, the dude was there just because his roommate took this horrendous shit, clogged the toilet. He had to go to the store and, and meet, uh, he met his future wife at this store because of his roommate and this horrible shit that he took. And, you know, a couple of years later, well, about a year later, they got married. And a couple of years after that, they had a kid. So basically, life did come from the anus of this one man, his roommate. Because, you know, <laughs> if his friend hadn't taken this horrible shit in the toilet and clogged it, his roommate wouldn't have went to the store to meet his future wife to have a baby. Life there comes from the life comes from the rectum. Uh, as far as as gays taking his church. There is a group that shelters homeless gay teens in New York City that is actively raising funds to buy this property. That's that awesome. Would be so awesome. And from what I heard on the Savage Love cast this morning, they already have eighty thousand dollars. Nice. All right. So they are well on Good their job. way. Good job. They raised that we, in just a couple days. We should, you know, put some info in the show notes on that. 
Yes, I will donate. track that down and put it in the the, the notes. All right, and moving on to feedback uh, from Travis McGee. It's been two episodes and no love on air from you, Wesley Bonetti. <laughs> Dustin, right. when you say you are allergic to nuts and fruits, are you referring to people or vegetation? <laughs> love you yes. guys. Yes. Uh, no, just, just the vegetation. Yes. He has no problem with fruits. He has a problem with nuts, like Pastor James Manning. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, Semen latte? <laughs> The nuts I can eat are cashews and pine nuts. The rest I'm allergic to. And I'm allergic to cherries and have oral allergy syndrome issues with most other fruits. But I'm good with berries and peaches and oranges and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just uh, food and pears. I'm just allergic to walnuts. Okay. Oh, not bad. Mm. They have mm. probably hazelnuts. For me? Yeah, no, 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 not that I know of. Just walnuts. They actually cause me physical pain in my mouth. Be careful with with uh, hazelnuts. Okay, they're closely related, and people who are allergic to one are usually allergic to the other. Hmm. Uh, and we got an, we got a new iTunes review. Yes, we're going to throw this shit. out here because iTunes reviews are really important for these guys. Um, if you type in atheist in iTunes, they're they're down at the bottom there. We're not at the oh. bottom. We're in fifteenth place. We're fifteenth place. Come on, we oh, want to get up by ten. Like Fifty. We want to get up to ten. So, um, more more reviews, guys. We need that. Anyway, what's, what's the review? Let's hear it from Jaded seventy six on January eleven. Not so jaded. Uh, good range of guests, fun and informative shows. A little explicit, but not overly so. I wait for every episode and enjoy them all. Aww. Great work, Aww. guys. Aww. Aww. Thank you, Jaded76. Yeah. Five. Five. Five stars. Fuck yeah. Out of five. Yeah. For those of you who don't use iTunes. Uh, and uh, I also noticed that the most helpful is now from 2013, <laughs> not 2012. And the next two most helpful are from 2015. Yeah. So when it says, was this review helpful? Please select. Yes. People have been doing this enough. So it's good. That the one from when our show was three months old from 2012 <laughs> is now in fourth place. Yeah. Fourth yeah, most so, helpful, yeah, not first. Give us, give us some fucking iTunes reviews. I'm sure some of you are listening on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, hey. and uh, soon enough, we'll have uh, a app on the google play store google play okay. and the I, apple app store yes uh, we did a okay. lot of um soul searching and we you know we we hit the committee uh, about the logo we've gone through several <laughs> decisions and we decided to go back to the original logo with some minor adjustments graphic designers i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i i tweaked it slightly but that yeah it's moved the uh, the the font a little bit closer to the middle. The text. I, I'm sure they don't need board. they don't need all uh, the details. Anyway, it's okay. Uh, if you'd like to send us uh, feedback, you can always email us at contact at atheistnomads dot com or call us at five four one. Yeah, excuse me, five four one two zero three zero six six six. Oh can, yes, we love those because that go that gives us voicemail footage uh-huh. to play on the show. And that's always awesome. And you can tweet us at Atheist Nomads or hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. And a new way with the video, which unfortunately Lauren has been frozen almost the entire time, is... Uh, Brand new webcam. Yeah. Is uh, you can like videos on YouTube and you can comment on YouTube. Yeah. And moving on to supporters. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any new patrons. No. But being down in income, uh, we really need your help. If you can give us a dollar an episode or even just a dollar a month, it really means a lot and it will help us scrape by. Uh, I My anxiety has actually been through the roof today over that. Uh, a little pro tip is uh, if you are getting married and one of you is on the healthcare exchange, wait till January. Oh. Yeah, you have to pay that back. Yeah, because right. if you get married, it's all based on income. So we and got married halfway amount. through the year, and so um, half of half of my year's worth of health exchange has to be paid back to the government. Well, the state. Uh, we have to pay back a 
thousand seven dollars of that. Fuck. Uh, it was a thousand seventy in subsidies. <laughs> so it was like seventy dollars. We don't have to pay back the rest. We do. So some uh, a tax refund we were looking at is uh, quickly turning into a bill that on one check is going to be hard to pay. Yep, it's tax season. We know everybody suffers, but um, me not working is really hitting us. So yeah. any help is good help. Yay! And if you can't support us financially, you can still help us out by getting us out to more people. Commenting, subscribing, liking, and sharing on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter gets us in more ears. And now with YouTube, more eyes as well. And if you can figure out how to comment on Stitcher, let us know. Now, we had somebody who tried and couldn't do it, and I've heard another co- podcast say that they don't know how you can do that. <laughs> oh and my I gosh, don't, that's a really good point. I don't use Stitcher, so I I do, though. Tried. I'll look into that. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, please nice. let us know when stuff like that doesn't work out. We need to know, that we need to fix the glitches. And even if we can't figure it out ourselves, and I probably should do this, um, I have... We have resources. Um, I have the email address of the vice president of podcaster relations at Libsyn. Wow. And he has a direct in with the leaders at iTunes and Stitcher. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah. Biggest podcasting hosting provider out there. So all those systems, they, they have to work well with Libsyn or... Like Everything. 20% of their content is gone. <laughs> so anyway, that is it for this episode. God damn, we've gone long. <laughs> and uh, we will be back next week with an interview. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.